This is how to protect yourself when the shelves are empty. Hmm. Things have gotten bad out there. Prices are going up. Made several videos today. And now we're going to talk about what happens if the supply crunch totally goes out and there's no food to get. There's no cans on the shelf. There's no bread. There's no pasta. Uh, what happens at that point? Well, at that point, people are going to struggle. People are going to be uh, enraged. People are going to be scared. People are going to be upset. Uh, the biggest problem you're going to have out there is people with children. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why people with children? Ugh, why people with children? Well, people with children aren't going to let their children starve. So if they can't get food for their children, then they're going to fight. They're going to rob. They're going to steal. They're going to rape. They're going to pillage. They're going to do what they got to do in order to get that food for their kids. It is a beautiful day here in Arkansas. Had some rain. And uh, it may be beautiful where you are. It may not be. But we got to have reality. What is going to happen? Um, things could get bad. What do we do? Uh, as a homesteader, as a prepper, we do different things to prepare ourselves. We have farms. We have animals. We grow produce. Uh, we get protection dogs. We do all different things to try to get our life set, try to get things um, ready for things to go bad. Some of us aren't as prepared as others. I used to be very well prepared. I had seven to ten years worth of uh, preps all together. I know how to grow things. Uh, like Carla told the neighbor, I've got a green thumb. Uh, I can grow pretty much anything right here on concrete if I had to. I know uh, what plants need, the nutrients, the water, uh, sustainability. So this is how you're going to protect yourself. You're going to want to get land. Like I said, we are right here in this house. This is our fence backyard. This is the neighbor lane. I'm out here on the sidewalk. We can grow in the backyard, but a quarter acre of land is not good enough. So you're going to need to learn, first of all, get seed trays, get some seeds, get some miracle Grow, um, get some soil outside and learn how to build soil with compost and everything else. Learn how to grow seed, learn how to grow a seedling. Once you have a seedling, turn that seedling into a plant. Once you turn that into a plant, get it to produce produce. Uh, look at how long it takes. Then if you get good at that, then you need to look at canning. You need to look at preserving, dehydrating, salting, everything to keep your food uh, healthy, keep your food sustainable to get you through things. The next thing you're going to want, some type of fencing. We have fencing here. It was here installed prior. But having a fenced in property gives you an element of security because that's something harder to get to. So is somebody more willing to jump this fence to try to get into the yard to get into the house? Or would they rather go up to a house that is unprotected? That's another way to protect yourself. Another way to protect yourself? Go to a grocery store. Do what the other homesteaders and YouTube channels are saying. Stock your shelves. If you have a bunch of food, then you are set. You don't have to worry because you're all set up. But one of my favorite ways to protect myself is right there on guard duty. That's Mr. Max. For those of you that don't know, I have a bunch of them. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See? So with all these Anatolian Shepherds, we have certain code commands that they are ready, if they need to, to do any type of protecting. So these are things that you need to be paying attention to. You can also get baseball bats and other things to protect yourself. But guess what? Most people are scared of dogs. Dogs are a lot quicker than people. 
they uh, this breed can sustain uh, extreme amount of pain. They have a high pain tolerance, and these dogs fight to the death. Now, do I need these dogs to do anything right now? Nope. They just come in here and give us loves and uh, take care of us. But, hold on, Mickey. I can say, without a shadow of a doubt, and you can leave comments for Carla, and Carla will tell you, she sleeps very soundly. She's not worried about locking the doors anymore, uh, going to sleep. Uh, if we have to run to town and her daughter is home, because the dogs will protect. Uh, dogs are a great alert system. Uh, if things do get bad and people are going house to house trying to rob, if you have a pack of dogs, I'm not talking one little chihuahua. Chihuahuas are good too because they're yippy dogs. If they know something comes around, yip, 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 yip. So anything that gives you a head up. Alarm system for your house, you know, that's just going to do alarm system. But guess what? If there's 20 houses in your neighborhood all being kicked in and robbed, do you think ADT or any of them are going to have enough people to report everything, let alone you think there's enough cops out there, especially since they're getting rid of cops, to send cops to 20 different houses in this neighborhood, 20 different houses in this one, and so on and so forth. These things happen in bad neighborhoods right now, today. It has happened for years in bad neighborhoods. Uh, some neighborhoods, cops don't even go into. You've seen it in the movies. Uh, that happens in big cities, Detroit, Chicago, uh, New York, uh, Los Angeles. There's places all around the world that that happens. We are talking about a grander scale of things occurring, just like our grocery stores. You are going into grocery stores, you are seeing shelves being empty. At some point, like the toilet paper disaster of a year ago when nobody could find toilet paper and people were crying because, oh, I had to use socks and all that. What are you going to do if that happens to food? You can't just use a sock like people did for toilet paper. Uh, like I said, these channels that are saying, Get, get seeds, put seeds in a closet so you can grow your own food if something happens. Well, if something happens today, you got months and months and months of time before you have any food from that plant. Unless you do lettuce. Lettuce isn't giving you a bunch of stuff. Um, so this is things you need to think about protecting yourself. Fencing your property, gonna cost money. Property that is farmable protects you. Property that has woods on it protects you because that's giving you lumber. That's giving you fence posts that you don't have to buy with fence posts being sky high. Uh, it's giving you firewood to heat your house. It's giving you firewood for your stove to cook your food on. It's giving you all different things uh when you cut up the wood you have sawdust sawdust can be used in nesting boxes for your chickens uh, pasture land you can cut and make grass clippings for your uh nesting boxes so on and so forth you want to build an ecosystem and that is how you protect yourself that is what i have been striving for except i keep uprooting and moving uprooting and moving until i can get to my permanent place that I think is going to be the best. The problem is, with everything going on, prices are a lot higher. It's going to cost me a lot more because I didn't get it done sooner. And that's the problem. We only live one life. We are only here for so long. And you only have so much time. Uh, for those people that want fruit trees, if you don't plant a fruit tree today, most likely, the fruit tree you're going to plant is one that's going to take four to five years to produce fruit because it's going to be a small tree. So right there, oh, I just planted a whole bunch of fruit trees yesterday. What good is that going to do for my survival until four or five years 
when they blossom and produce fruit. That's the things you got to think about. You got to think about short term. What are you going to do short term to protect yourself? And how do you take that short term and turn it into long term where it's a ecosystem? Uh, just like nature survives, you need to be able to set up an ecosystem to survive on your own place. Um, if you have animals, they produce manure. Manure makes grass grow. Grass feeds those animals. Those animals feed you. Their scraps and fats go to chickens after you boil the bones and everything. That feeds your chickens. Your chickens produce eggs. Your eggs can go to your dogs. The eggs can go to pigs. Uh, pigs are your garbage disposal. So all your plant scraps, when the plants die, you feed the plants to them. You feed the uh, onion tops and bottoms and potato peels and all that, everything to the pigs. So there's no waste. What does that do immediately? The pigs digest it and they poop out fertilizer. So instead of throwing all the food scraps on a pile and you're waiting all that time, flipping the pile, flipping the pile for it to break down, I'd rather give it to animals, get in excrement, take the excrement, put it right in the soil, let it sit for some time. You still gotta let it sit for some time, but it is a quicker situation than trying to compost everything. So you wanna have everything from start to finish with the least amount of money going out of your pocket. Now, going all the way back into time, unless you are surviving, just surviving, not living, you cannot do everything on your own. There's always a general store or a trading post or things that have happened throughout the different generations because you're not going to be able to produce everything on your homestead. You're not going to be able to produce everything on your land. Unless you're Bill Gates and you own however many thousands and thousands of acre of farmland that he's still buying up to today uh, because he knows what's going on. Uh, can you produce all that type of stuff? Uh, for the average person, you're going to want to produce some meat from animals. So you want a small flock of chickens, a small flock or herd of goats. Uh, if you can do a cow or two or in a pig or two, then you are set meat wise. Uh, you don't need anything like me where you have 200 plus animals, but then you also got to realize with 200 plus animals, I can produce a lot more animals. Like my goats, I went all the way down to like 18 goats. Now I'm at like 30, 40 goats because uh, they produce so rapidly. If you only have a pair of goats, you've got to wait however many months until you have a baby goat. And that's if one of the parents don't get sick. That's if there's no complication in the goat giving birth and dies from giving birth. Or if it's a stillbirth and you don't get that baby, then you got to wait another year for it to go around to uh, reproduce and have a new baby. So these are the things you got to think about protecting yourself. You want to set yourself up with lamb. You want to set yourself up with protection dogs, donkeys. You can get some mean donkeys out there. You can get some mean alpacas and llamas like Miracle. Miracle used to be really aggressive. I calmed him down on that. Um, baseball bats, uh, things that go bang, uh, knives, uh, archery. All these different things you can set up like a prepper. For those of you that don't know about homestead, don't know about prepping, do your research into that. Um, a lot of it will be uh, them wanting you to buy specialty backpacks and specialty clips and all these different things. Don't waste your money on all that. Uh, worry about land. Land is your number one goal. Uh, without good producible land, you won't have nothing. That's what I'm telling you. I have 120 acres of hardwood forest. That forest is not supporting the animals. I am buying hay because it is hardwood forest. Yes, I need hardwood forest to have firewood, lumber, all that type of stuff. If I got into hand cutting, which I'm not doing that because I don't have the back to be able to do all the hand cutting of the wood and I don't have the money for a plant. Hello, how are you doing out there, Helena? Um, but you need land. 
my 50 acres in Colorado, I could produce some stuff. Everybody saw my flower gardens. I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Uh, but my Colorado property has six to eight months of winter. What does six to eight months of winter do? Nothing. It does not help. It stops flies. It does stop flies. It stops flies, stops mosquitoes, stops all of the bad bugs. But here in Arkansas, with the humidity that we do have, uh, like I said, it's about three months, uh, mid-June to October, that we have bad humidity, three and a half, four months. Um, but you can grow stuff here. I can grow stuff right now. It's beautiful outside, even though it's cool. I can grow lettuces. I can grow uh, beet, beets and beet greens and carrots and pumpkins and squashes, zucchinis and all that stuff right now I can be growing. In Colorado, they just had their first snowstorm. Uh, at my ranch, they had snow. Uh, what can you be growing right now in Colorado? You can't. Uh, that's another reason why I decided not to go to upstate New York or Alaska or Montana. Not only for uh, not being able to take animals to certain states. Sell some of the hardwood. Uh, DT, I have thought about that. Um, I don't know... The prices, I don't know how that stuff worked. And because I'm under contract with my real estate agent, I would have to wait till those, um, if the property doesn't sell in the time of my contracts, then I can do that. Right now, I can't change the property because the property is under contract. So I can't do any major changes uh, while it's for sale because it has to be, uh, if I take hardwood, um, if I cut the wood off the property, then the value isn't there to the property, which kills the um, contract with the realtor. And then I can be held liable. So I have to wait till that does. Um, yes, that that's something I, I didn't think about until after I got under contract. So calling a logging company, I was going to do that and talk to uh, locals that I know and neighbors and find out who I should deal with, who I shouldn't deal with, um, and so on and so forth. But I'm under contract, so for now I can't do that. But back to the properties, you want property that you can survive on. You want property you can live on. Like I said, the Colorado one's under snow right now. Uh, my 120 acres here is all hardwood forest. That's why I said you want hardwood forest. You want pastures. You want land you can garden on, open land you can garden. It doesn't have to be pastures. You need pastures to feed your animals. That's what's killing me right now with my animals. I'm buying 10 round bales of hay a month. Um, and that's right now during the heat. When we get into winter, I'm going to be going 15 to 20 round bales, doubling up. Uh, same with grain. I'm buying all this grain, uh, $1,400 a month in grain. Winter time, I'm going to be pumping that up. Yes, it's still cheaper than Colorado grain prices. Hay is cheaper than Colorado hay prices. Um, but it's still, prices are going up everywhere. Um, so you want water, you want hay fields, you want the pastures, you want hardwood forests, you want a uh, uh, place to live. Uh, moving here to this qu quarter acre of land on Main Street does us no good. Uh, we can have a little garden in the backyard, uh, but the, it, we can't have animals here. We, well, we could, um, but we don't want to be those neighbors that sound up the neighborhood, uh, smell up the neighborhood. Because um, if we brought chickens over and peacocks over and everything like that, we only have a limited amount of space to do anything. And that's not what we want. So this is a stepping stone to get where we need to be. Um, but our next step, hopefully, if one of two or both of the homesteads we have can sell, then we will be getting our permanent homestead and we will set everything up. Uh, I wish I could buy it right now. I can't uh, because I have loans with banks and I have 21000 in credit card debts. I can't get any type of loan to get land right now. So I am stuck. If you're able to do it, if you're able to pull the debt, pull the debt and get where you need to be now. Because like I said, prices are only going up. My $20,000 house down the street from me 
is up in value. It's valued 24,000 according to Zillow. Um, it just keeps going up in value. Um, that's all I can say is protect yourself because when the shelves go empty and you have single moms and single dads or families that have children, they will not let those children starve. They will come for your food. They will come for you. Uh, they will come for your animals. Uh, people think they're going to go out. They're going to shoot all the deer and squirrel and rabbits and be able to live. When all that's gone, guess where they're going next? To farms. Uh, if you do not have protection, if you do not have a massive dog pack, uh, donkeys, llamas that will chase people, keep people back, good luck. Uh, if you have one or two dogs, you know, if people are, uh, hate to say it, if they are sending projectiles towards your animals and you only have one or two, you're going to have none. But if you have a pack, you have a good chance of taking them out and protecting your property, your livelihood, your food for your children, um, versus only having one or two dogs that can't protect a whole uh, homestead. So do what you can. Fencing is a big thing. Protection dogs are another. Protection objects, knives, bats, all that type of stuff is another. Uh, food, stability, sustainability, and creating an ecosystem on your property. If you're in the cities, get out of the cities. They give you nothing. If you are in town like we are, get out of town. Um, if you have family, join up together. Get a piece of property together. Everybody put $2,500 in to get a $10,000 property or $10,000 each to get a $40,000 property or whatever, however many people are in your family. Do a community homestead between your family uh also with family watch your family you don't know who is good and who is bad uh i have one set of real family uh that i still talk to or deal with uh, a lot of my true family is people that are not blood um know who you are dealing with and those the way you find out who you're dealing with to protect yourself in another way is when you're in the worst situation, those that are there, those that answer that phone call, no matter the hour, no matter the day, are the ones you want to do partnerships with. The ones you want to have going into a bad situ situation with. You don't want to be with somebody you think you were friends because you go to the bar all the time and cover their tab to find out that they're not going to do nothing for you, protect you, or flip on you in a bad situation. Make sure you find the right people to be with. Make sure you're setting yourself up. Make sure you are protecting yourself. Yourself comes before anything else. With that, I hope everybody has a great day. I'm going to probably go get changed. I'm still in pajama pants. And I'm going to go mow a lawn because I hear somebody out there with a lawnmower. Uh, so the front lawn didn't get mowed. I'm going to get the lawn mowed. Uh, there's a bunch of black walnuts. Oh, here we go. This is another thing. One last thing before I go. And then I am truly out of here for the day. No more live stream. No more videos. But this is another reason why I chose Arkansas. And that is because you can survive in most places over here. So my neighbor around this way has pecan trees. And my hardwood forest on my property has black walnuts, pecans, and everything else. So these are all black walnuts. I was told they're called English walnuts. So I don't know if that's just what the nuts are called. But I'm, I'll flip the camera around. Look at all these. Boom, 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 boom. So I've already collected some. The neighbor collected a bunch. They left all the ones here in our yard. So there's food. There is a food source sitting here in trees. And the trees still have a bunch of up there in the branches. It's hard to see with the sky and the lights. But that's something you need to think about. 
move into an area buy land in an area that has old orchards that have old nut trees uh, things that you don't have to grow every year these trees are dropping nuts uh, we have a lot of oaks on the homestead the 120 acres here in arkansas and uh they produce acorns which you can eat acorns you just gotta soak the tannins out another thing to protect yourself with the trees is do your research on edible plants a lot of people don't know uh, i came from colorado which has a lot of pine trees you can get the white xylem it's like a white sheet uh, in between the bark and the wood on pine trees that is edible and Native Americans survived on that for many many years so there could be things on your property that you're gonna buy when you get out of the city out of the concrete jungle the asphalt jungle and get out to real jungle uh, that you'll be able to eat survive on and thrive on and I wish the best to everybody out there I hope this doesn't get as bad as I think it's going to get, but things are looking worse and worse and worse. So with that, good luck to everybody. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer whatever questions I can. I was, uh, I went through survival school in the military, so I have a little bit of an extra boost uh, behind me than other people that haven't dealt with these situations. But like I said, land, number one, food, number two animals, knowing how to grow plants, uh, protection animals, uh, fencing, everything else, foraging. Um, there's so many different things. So with that, take care. And like my old saying was, live happy, live free. That's the only way to be because that's all you can do now is try to live free on your own property, do your own thing and try to be happy. So take care. I'll talk to you guys later.